Hi, I'm in the E65 BMW and this is the center console and as you can see the nav screen is missing and the reason why it's missing is I had to disconnect it. Now what was happening was I would just be driving or even just sitting in the car, next thing the nav screen would reset, it would even have some horizontal lines on and my music would go off and then it would reboot and start again. Right, I'm at the back of the car, I'm in the trunk area and I've removed the side panel and you might notice that some modules have been removed. Right, the modules that I've removed are the SVS module. This module normally sits like this, just underneath the boot hydraulic uh, section here. There's a hydraulic pump there and then the nav sits over there like that. Now, because the nav was going offline, I removed the nav because what happens is this is a fiber optic system and it's, on a, it's connected as a ring, which means that any device in the ring that is faulty will then reset or make all the devices go offline. The navigation system, I just uh, depress that, pull that out to unplug this. There's a tab over there, so I depress that, that comes out, and then the antenna, I just pull out. Over here, I've actually just joined the two fiber optics together, uh, just preliminary. I just put them close to each other and made sure they were straight. And I've been driving around and there's been no problem. So since I've removed the NAV and the SVS module, I've had no problems with my music, etc. So that means it's one of these two modules. So the first step would be to remove all the plates, which I did, uh, remove the brackets so that I could get in there. I unplugged it and I've driven around and now I know it is one of those two modules. Now what I noticed is, as you can see here, right over here I've got the hydraulic system that operates the boot and it drips this red liquid which is automatic gearbox oil, which is actually what I use, it's just some red, some red transmission fluid and it was dripping onto the nav so the nav had some of it over here and there you can even see some of the residue and also over here now the svs module on the other hand looks like it's pretty drenched in this oil and there you can see on the seam the oil is all there so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to go into my office i'm going to open this up and see what it looks like inside maybe there's oil inside right now just for your reference my boot is operating fine and the hydraulic fluid that is uh, coming out here it's not like a lot it's not like there's a pool on the bottom of the trunk here so it's been happening over time probably a drip every now and then and over time it's actually got into the svs module which i'll soon show you right so using a t15 yeah, no, that's already telling me there's a problem. Um, yeah, I can already see some residue there. And if I lift this out, it's very sticky inside. And okay, so it has some immersion in the uh, transmission fluid. Uh, this is transmission fluid because that's the fluid I use on the hydraulic pump to open the boot. So there we can see the residue. So what this means is that the fluid that is used to open the boot has leaked into this SVS unit and possibly is uh, disturbing the MOST bus and that is resetting my system because it's in a ring. Now just some things that I want to bring to your attention. I noticed that the fault only occurred after the car was on for some time. Notice how this is very sticky but obviously when it warms up it gets more runny and being more runny I'm sure that it causes more shorts. Also I noticed that it was worse when the car was in the sun. Again if the uh, oil was heated up, it would move around and it would cause a problem. So what I need to do is clean this up and then put it back in the car and see if that solves the problem. So I'm going to have to clean it with a toothbrush. All right, I'm going to use a rubbing alcohol and I'm going to put it over there just to try and loosen that oil. I'm going to put some here on my toothbrush and start uh, getting that oil off. It's actually sticky everywhere. Wow. Uh, might even have to use some thinners. If you've got enamel thinners, this is the best to dissolve the oil that is leaked on the board. If you just give the thinners a bit of time to work, uh, just put it on very liberally. I just put it on quite, uh, I, I kind of drench the items here in the thinners. Now it's important to take a cloth and just dab it because you have to suck up that uh, dissolved oil. Otherwise, it's got nowhere to go. So I'm just dabbing it. I'm not wiping it, I'm just dabbing. You can take a blow just to dry it. 
Right, so you can see most of the oil is actually gone. If you look at this side, yeah, it's got a bit of a it's got a bit of a dirty residue, but that's where the alcohol comes in handy. I just put a little bit of alcohol on here and do a final clean. The alcohol just removes the oil, any oily residue that might still be there. Now all I do is I leave this in the sun for a couple of hours. There might be some liquid that's gone underneath some of these microcontrollers. So I want it to be completely dry, leave it in the sun for a few hours, and then I can reinstall this. All right, so I've cleaned as much oil off as possible. I've left it in the sun for about an hour and a half. I don't want to leave it too long because this is an electrolytic capacitor and I don't want it to dry out. Now I will just return it into the casing. Right, to open up the navigation I need to depress these two spring clips here so I have to press those two in and then there are two more on this side so what I do is I just do the one side I uh, do the one side and then I pull back and then I do the other side and then I pull back and then I can slide this cover out now I've already fault traced mine and fixed it, so I'm now reporting on what I did. Okay, so I needed to open this cover because there was uh, some of that sticky oil all over here, here, and also some over here, and there was a little bit that had dripped here. Now I opened this up by, by just unclipping it there, and you can just take a screwdriver to lift it along the sides, and then it flips up, and then I just pull it in that direction and flip up even more. Now here is the unit. So I had some oil over here. Uh, there was a little bit uh, here at the back and there was some over here on the connector and a little bit over here. Now the only part that was significant was here. It had found its way onto these moving plastic pieces. So what I did is I ejected the CD. Uh, to eject the CD you must have it plugged in. Press the eject button. I removed the CD put some thinners and just cleaned all the uh, moving parts. Some of the oil was here, here. So because I've cleaned it, it was able to move freely. I did inspect inside. I opened the entire CD tray. This is a T7 and there are four screws. One, two, three, four. Right, once you've removed the four screws, you can lift the CD tray out. Here's the CD module and there is a ribbon cable and then another cable over here. If you want to remove this completely, all you need to do is pull that like that. And once you've opened both sides, you can remove the ribbon cable like that. In this case, I'm not going to remove it. And then this, you just unplug it by uh, pulling it backwards. So I had worked with this, I had opened it up, I had cleaned it, but this is not necessarily causing the MOS bus failure. Problems over here would cause the navigation to disappear, but it won't necessarily reset your whole MOS bus, causing everything to power down and reboot. For example, if you're listening to music, then everything goes off and then it has to come back on. Uh, that I don't think would happen from a problem here. For example, having oil here and things like that. No, that would be your navigation not functioning properly but still the MOS bus would work so you can pull this to the side in order to inspect if there's any oil there in my case I had no oil if you have some oil you can clean it in the same way as I showed with the SVS module so in this case I'm going to return this if you do want to go in deeper you remove that screw and that screw this comes out which gives you full view of the input stage of the unit. And then at the back, there is a plate which has a screw there and a screw there. And then this comes out and this also gives you an underview of the circuit board. Although it is covered with another metal box inside there. But you will still be able to see if there's some oily residue. Alright, so in this case, I'm going to close this up because in my opinion, this is all working. I have tested it. Right, to return this, I come at an angle like that, and then I make sure that it climbs over there, but under those lips. And then I align the other side, same story, over and under, over and under. And then I can just, using an even force, press it down. And now I've just got two screws at the bottom here.
as you can see the screws are not wanting to go in easily and that is because I've incorrectly uh, seated this this must go over that then this whole plate will move a little bit to the right which will allow the screws to seat correctly right over here I'm just uh, opening this join I did this is just a superficial join while I was doing the troubleshooting all I did is I took some heat shrink and some toothpicks just to align the uh, sending and receiving of the fiber optic connections there we go I just held it in place with these toothpicks and then I used heat shrink and I can just remove this tape right so I'm just reinserting these right, so that went there and the fiber optic for the SVS module that goes there and I can return them Right, this is what it looks like. This lip is uh, on the side here. And this is the space for the navigation unit. Right, so there's a screw there. There's one there. There's one at the bottom here, one at the bottom on this side, and one towards the back. Right, now I just slide this uh, cover back on. Notice that uh, these flanges are towards the back. Uh, it does say top over there it's hooked in here and now i can plug everything back right now i had some oil that had found its way to this connector and also on this connector so i did clean them but also there was some oil inside here on these pins so that was actually a secondary fault what was happening is i noticed that i had everything connected and then when it's connected you can see the lights here and what i did is i wiggled the connector at the back and i noticed that the sound system went off so that meant i had the sound system on in the car and i was listening to it then i would go around and check if anything was loose by wiggling stuff and when i wiggled here the whole MOS bus reset itself then i knew that i had an additional fault sitting here so i had two faults here I had, the first fault I had was the SVS module. When I was driving and it would get warm, it would start to create problems on my MOS bus. Second one was if I went over a bump or something like that, I noticed that it would also just reset itself. So these are some tips to try to determine what is the problem. Because this works in a ring, all you need to do is remove the the connector and if you have a spare fiber optic cable i know you probably haven't got one lying around you just need to uh, align those send and receive the fiber optics so that it will then send the signal back around the loop and right now you should see that it's flashing red there that's telling me there's a problem what i'm showing you is that i can open this over here there's a little clip on the side i'll just open it i can actually open it with my nail and there we go and there are the uh, send and receive. You can even open this as well. You just need to depress that. So I just depress here. And then that pops out at the back. And then you just need to lift uh, that. There's a little clip there. And there you can see the uh, fiber can come out. So if you can get both of these out, you can then bypass other modules or just align these two together using heat shrink or whatever you want to use. And then you can do some fault tracing so that also means that if you have this one like that you can now make your own loop by doing that so you can open both if you want i mean you could take this other one out and then just open this don't do harsh bends if, uh, fiber optics mustn't do uh, 90 degree bends and that rather have gradual bends and then you can put these two together and you should be able to see which module is giving you the problem so in this case, you can see the red light is flashing. So it's telling me there's a problem. Obviously the problem because I've opened the ring. Here's the other side of the ring. So if I put it like that, notice it will stop flashing. So I can fault trace by removing modules, holding these in place with heat shrink or whatever you, contraption you have. You could even use some sticky putty. And then drive around and then determine which module is faulty 
So in this case, I already knew it was my SVS and my navigation. Now, because I had oil inside, yeah, I cleaned it with thinners, but what you can also use is a contact cleaner. This is a deoxidizer. So I just spray this inside here. I only spray it on the metallic connections. I don't spray it anywhere near the fiber optic connections. This connector needs to be completely open in order to reseat that. I put it in like that. Put it in like that and now i can reseat it so all of this is now connected and cleaned and now i return my goodies now i return everything and then i drive around and do some tests i found that the problem was because of the oil in here and the oil on the connectors of this in my case when i fiddled with the connector i noticed this on led went dark and then it went on again then i knew that it wasn't making good conductivity because oil had seeped into the back of the connector and that was the second problem on this vehicle all right so there's some tips and, and that's the process that i followed in order to repair this and i uh, hope it was helpful thanks for watching and cheers